This is a uh, base coat for Marmarino Revesto Fine. You notice he's got a uh, Nova primer on the MDF board, and he's coming back, and he's covering that completely. He's going to make this coat as smooth as he can. It can have some lines in. It can have some little variations, but you want to try to keep big lumps out if you can. Big straight lines, you want to keep those out. Those are unnatural. So his mo motions are always almost like in a circular motion. Now we're coming back with our second coat. Second coat is very, very important in Marmarino. He's going to come back. He's not going to apply too much pressure. We say that he's almost like trying to float the material on here. He's trying to get it on there, covering up the white completely so you don't see any white. He doesn't want to overwork it. If you overwork it, you cause the material to shine, and your subsequent coats don't want to adhere properly. So he takes his trowel and he spreads it nice, not a whole lot of pressure. You don't see a whole lot of pressure on his knuckles. You don't see them turning white. He's not breaking the trowel. He's just spreading it out. When it's done, it should look like a flat matte paint. It should not look like a Venetian plaster finish uh, with high modeling and stuff. It should just look like a flat, dry, matte paint. If that's what it looks like after your second coat, you have succeeded. Your next coat will go on beautifully. You want it nice and smooth. His second coat is dried up. He's coming back now with his third coat. You notice he's coming back with a little bit of material on his trowel. And he's spreading it, adding a little bit more pressure. You can see a little more pressure on his trowel. And he's spreading it. Now you're beginning to see the different nuances of Venetian plaster. He applies and he comes back directly and he does a cross hatch. See? Cross hatch. He applies and then a cross hatch. He's coming from the edges now, so you won't see that as much. But whenever he puts it in the middle, you'll see he'll put it down and then cross hatch. This smooths out those edges. You never have a straight line going across. You want to avoid that as much as possible. You can see he's pretty tight with his finish, and he's not using a whole lot of material either. Using one side of the trowel, this keeps crumbs from uh, forming on the side that does, is not yet used that often. This, um, it's pretty tight. You can see it now. It's got nice nuances on there. He's going to uh, take his burnishing trowel and make sure it's completely dried. He has a rag with him. He comes back over. He compresses the material. While he's compressing, he's also polishing. He cleans it off. Make sure if you've got any kind of sticky residue on there, take it off. See? Always compressing. You're beginning to see it. I don't know if you can see it. Um, on camera here, but you're beginning to get a nice sheen. Cleans it off, nice and dry. You want to keep it nice and dry. This way you don't pull. It's already got a nice, beautiful shine on it. And that's a nice sample of uh, Revesto Marmarino. That's without protection soap or any kind of waxes. The sheen comes from the material and the waxing and the burnishing, excuse me. Here Gian is applying some of the Revesto Marmarino impregnation paste, soapstone. He applies it with his trowel, puts on as much as it'll accept. The Marmarino will only accept so much. The rest of it will sit on the top. He'll come back with a rag and wipe off the excess. You want to make sure that your material is completely dried, or if not, it gets kind of nasty looking. Make sure your material is dry, and then you apply your impregnation paste. Let it dry, adds a nice sheen to it, makes the walls water resistant. If you want to clean it, very, very nice finish.